Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and today we're continuing our series on assembling your Wire EDM starter kit. In this video, we'll begin assembly of the wire tool itself. The next portion of our mechanical assembly will be focused on the tension arm, the tensioner body, and the subsequent installation of those two onto the endoskeleton. We're going to start off with our tensioner arm. There's only a little bit going on here. We'll take one of our 628 bearings and our M5 by 12 button head cap screw. These parts will get installed into this lower portion of the tension arm right here. Fit in the 625 bearing. Then we'll take our M5 by 12 button head cap screw and install into this hole here. Before you begin actually fastening this in, make sure that the fastener itself lines up with the hole in the bearing. This is important because you don't want to bend the plastic up out of place and cause damage to it. As you start to get your fastener head closer to the base of the plastic here, you're going to want to pay attention to the bottom of this hole. You can see that the M5 by 12 button head cap screw threads directly into the plastic. If you apply too much force here, you're going to strip out this hole. Apply light force and then set it aside. The next portion is going to be installation of the flushing cap onto the tensioner body. Before we install this, we need to install the wire guide into this large hole on the flushing cap. This feature was meant to be a press fit for the wire guide. You may want to take an M8 drill or reamer to the hole, just to make sure you have a nice close fit that can still be installed. Now that we've brought that hole to size, we can take our 0.3 millimeter wire guide and press it in for installation. The reason this part is supposed to be a tight fit is because it prevents XY translation of the wire in relation to the tool itself. If we can prevent that sort of translation, we'll have a more accurate cut during our EDM process. Don't be afraid to take this part and press it against a stable surface like I'm doing here. Now that I feel that the part's been bottomed out, it's time to install it here. Again, this is meant to be a pretty tight fit, so you can feel free to press against a solid surface. Now that we have both parts more or less flush, we can move on to the installation in these two holes of the M3x8 button head cap screws. So we can just take these and drop them into the holes, threads facing downwards, and then find the fastener cap with your Allen key. When finishing the installation of these fasteners, it's not critical to put a huge amount of force on them. You can make sure they're just hand tight. Now we can move on to our boat-in fittings. They arrive in your package like this. These black portions here need to get removed prior to installation into the tensioner body. It's easiest just to place the pliers into the seal, grab, and then remove. These seals can then be discarded. So now that we've removed the seals from these Bowden couplers, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is install these blue caps. These are collars that help retain the Bowden tube within the assembly. You could use pliers or a press or a vise for this or even just try to push them in by hand. I generally like to just give it a small tap with a hammer. I find that the hammer does a good job and keeps them in decent shape. And you can see that the part is now retained within that assembly. This button action here is important to retain during assembly because that's going to allow you to easily get your Bowden tube out of the tool at a later point if you want to replace it or change it for a different length. So the next part is going to be installing them in here. And this is actually pretty easy. Should just be a press fit again. It's important that you try to get them decently aligned before you press in. And you can see that they just snap into place. The next portion of our assembly is going to be preliminary installation of the tensioner body, the tension arm, and the stationary idler for the tensioner body. This part only has two fasteners, and this is about the time when you can start using Loctite if you wish. We use blue Loctite for our assemblies, but it's not entirely necessary for this. First thing we're gonna do is take out our 625 bearing. We'll take one of those, and then we'll take our stationary wire guide idler isolator. We can put these two together like this. Next, we'll take one of our M4 by 16 socket head cap screws, and we'll place that through this part. You might want to use an Allen key to actually install that part, twisting it down through the plastic. You can then take a little bit of Loctite and just apply it to the hole that's used for that stationary idler. And while we're at it, we might want to apply some to the hole that's used for the tensioner arm later. You don't have to go crazy with Loctite, a little bit will go a long way. So then we take our part, get it ready with the Allen key, so we go for installation. We'll make sure that our orientation of these two printed parts 
is right where we want it to be with the actual endoskeleton. We'll just make sure that this is decently hand tight. Now we can take another M5 by 16 countersunk, install this into the tension arm at this point. Again, you might want to use your Allen key for this part. You can get it started by hand if that's easier for you. Sometimes when I'm doing installations like this, it's easiest for me to start the threads by hand. This is meant to be a tighter hole in that plastic part, and that's because we're dealing with pretty significant forces. We don't want there to be a lot of play as the tension arm moves back and forth when you load and unload. Now that I have that fastener installed fully, I know that it's in the right position. You actually want to back it out a few turns so you can see I don't have it all the way installed. That's going to make it easier for us to install it over here on this hole of the endoskeleton. So we'll put that in place and we can just move forward with the installation of this. So when you thread this part all the way down into the aluminum endoskeleton, you're going to be getting some friction in this tension arm. That's okay. If you want to back it off an eighth to a quarter turn so you have slightly less friction on the movement of this arm, that's cool too. That's where the Loctite really comes into play because you might be backing this off and not exactly clamping the parts down really hard. Now that I have good movement in here, I can move into the installation of the spring for the tension arm. The spring's gonna require our M3 rib nut, our M4 by 25 button head cap screw, and the spring we include with the kit. Now that we have the parts out of the bag, we're gonna take our spring and our rib nut and install them like so. The spring just sits within the rib nut there. Then we can go and start threading in our M4 by 25 button head cap screw. You wanna get this fastened just to the point where it begins to protrude through the printed part there. Now, we can take our spring in this orientation, place the base of the spring on this extended boss from the 3D print here, and then push the rib nut up over the M4 by 25 button head cap screw. That'll keep it retained in place on both sides. And we can leave this mostly untensioned for the time being. The next step of assembly is going to be the front and the back lower bases. These are the parts that actually hold the idlers for wire motion around the frame and hold the tungsten carbide block. And because they're required for this segment, we're actually going to be starting with the assembly of our lower idler wheels. These both require a 625 bearing. Depending on your print tolerances, you might need to add super glue for this step. It's up to you depending on the fit. I printed these parts out of ASA, so I actually expect them to be fairly tight when it goes to installation, and you can see here, I can't exactly press them in just with my fingers. So I'm gonna use a hammer to tap these into place, but you could also use a vise or something similar. So I'll just get those started, and I'll give them a bit of a tap. With these installed, we can move on to the installation of the front lower base. So we'll take our front lower base, we'll put it on the endoskeleton, and then we can put our idlers directly onto there. This part also uses the M4 by 16 flathead cap screws. If you want, you can add a little bit of Loctite to these. I'm going to. So start those by hand, and then we can move on to installing them with the Allen key. Again, the reason why these idler bosses are so tight is because we want to maintain the position of these idler wheels on the endoskeleton. The way we design this, the bosses themselves are actually supposed to get flared out by the countersunk head on this screw. And that's gonna provide better retention and pulling forces downwards of the idler itself towards the endoskeleton. One thing that I just ran into here is when I was going to install this, I got a bit of a cross threading started on there that's pushing up this plastic. You need to pay special attention to make sure that doesn't occur because it's pretty easy to actually strip out the heads on these screws. So we're gonna make sure that our orientation is proper before we finish the installation of this screw itself. Now that these idlers are installed and we can see that they're generally wiggle free, they're nicely held tightly to the surface of the endoskeleton itself, we can move on to the back side of the assembly and put on the lower base. These three fastener holes are M4 by 16 and they're actually gonna go into the threaded inserts we installed earlier. These are just pass-through holes for the fasteners. And since these aren't load-bearing fasteners, you can be gentle with their installation. You don't need to worry about it so much. And now we've installed the back lower base and the front lower base. With the wire tool mostly assembled, we're gonna stop for now. In the next video, we'll cover installation of the motor and on-tool wiring for the wire tool. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at the Discord link below. Our team and many others are there and we're ready to help you troubleshoot.